thank you. Now, I want to move on to the sort of the next uh, topic, which I think continues to be uh, at the forefront of ALL therapy, which is really the role of minimal residual disease. And I I'd like to turn to you, Jeff, and, and tell us what, what you think is the role in identifying patients who are at risk for relapse and, and do we guide treatments or should we guide treatments? Well, the, the, I mean, this is a very important and, and somewhat controversial area. Um, very important in the sense that it's, it's almost intuitive or obvious that if you have detectable disease, that patient will do poorly in the long run. Um, and studies have borne out uh, initially in the pediatric setting and then later on in the adult ALL setting that studying the presence of minimal residual disease by a variety of different um, methodologies clearly predicts for a relapse and poor outcome at, at a very high rate. So it, it's a very important prognostic marker, um, but it also offers an opportunity for, um, for treatment in patients who have achieved some degree of response to convert them to a a negative state where they would do better for longer. So I, I do believe that MRD is very important. It's already been established as a prognostic marker, but the, the controversial part is, and I struggle with this, and I'm sure everybody does, is how do we intervene when we know a patient has MRD positivity? And I don't know about, about you guys, but sometimes I don't even want to know. <laughs> because, so I... because you have a patient that exhibits MRD positivity, and you know that they're going to do poorly pretty much no matter what you offer them. We know that transplant uh, leads, uh, is associated with poor outcomes uh, with MRD positivity compared with MRD negativity. And the ability to intervene effectively um, to date has not been uh, very good for, for therapies. Now that may be changing with novel agents such as blinitumumab to be able to convert MRD positivity into MRD negativity with hopefully long-term outcomes. But right now it, it's, it's a difficult area um, it needs to be explored fully. And we also have the, the, the difficulty in knowing what is the best way to monitor MRD. There are a variety of ways to do it. We can look at flow cytometry. We can look at immunoglobulin heavy chain rearrangements. We can look at uh, PCR for known mutations that exist in the patient, all of which are very sensitive, probably to one in the 10,000 cells or less. Um, but we also have to standardize that approach to make it more applicable for larger numbers of patients. But I think it's a very important uh, aspect of ALL therapy moving forward. I would, yeah, we'll, we'll. I would actually go as far as saying it's, it has supplanted many of the traditional risk factors or is adding w much beyond those. Um, since we've been talking a lot about the 1043 study, there was, uh, <clears throat> there was additional based on the MRD status in that trial, there was an intensification of treatment given. So there were some recommendations, and I'm curious to see that data when it comes out, how many patients you can convert to the truly MRD negative state. You're right what you're saying at the end, if somebody, even after, you know, this intensification of therapy, if, after, if a patient is still MRD positive, you know, outlook will be, or the prognosis will be poorer, but then we have novel agents like the natumumab and others to hopefully convert an MRD state. So I think it should be measured. Um, I think we're not measuring it enough. I think the Europeans measure it more than we do. The technique flow or through PCR or, you know, I mean, I think the essays are both valid as long as it's being done and everybody starts thinking about it. Okay. So if I'll get to you, Mark, in terms of the new ECOG study, are you measuring this? Are you doing NGS or how, how has it been measured in, in the ongoing upfront study? Uh, we're using multi-parameter flow cytometry uh, in our central ECOG lab to do this. We are uh, collecting samples and we'll plan to, uh, as a correlative study later on, do next generation sequencing and compare that to the results of uh, multi-parameter flow cytometry. But right now, flow is our main approach in that study. And I think that's one of the, the questions you all talked about different techniques, the different flow labs. There's four color flow, eight color flow, 12 color flow. Jacques van Dongen does 16 color flow. And then there's NGS with sequentin adaptive. So it's, it's, for the practicing oncologists, is this a complication? Is, we say do MRD, but do we say, is there a standard right now? Would we agree that there's a place or is it just go to a reputable lab? That, uh, I mean, I think you can, you, Ideally, you'd like to have a centralized process for doing it, um, but I think the the, if the the techniques are are efficacious across the board. Like the the, the UK group, the MRC group uses um, uh, immunoglobulin heavy chain rearrangement assessment 
with also a very high predictive value um, for relapse in the MRD setting. So, whereas other groups in Europe are using flow cytometry based methods. So I think they're all applicable. I think that. Um, so I think we have the luxury of, 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 of having a central ECOG lab for that study. But if, if you're a practicing, if you may, we're talking to practicing oncologists, where would they send it? Is, is there a place? Um, is it really for prime time? Or is it only there for prognostic and not for treatment changes, I suppose? Well, I think, it's, I think it's there for prime time. I, I think people should be using it, but I think there is a question of you know, which lab to go with. I think more and more uh, centers, uh, their pathologists are able to do this, particularly by, by flow. Uh, there are also you know, central labs within the U.S., commercial labs that can uh, do this technique as well. Uh, they haven't necessarily, one lab versus another has not necessarily standardized their technique. We went to a lot of measures and worked with our pediatric colleagues in the children's oncology group to, uh, to help standardize our assay and the ECOG study, but uh, that's still, still an open question. Novel immunotherapy.